Okay, today's lesson we'll be talking about total internal reflection. These are the learning outcomes. When the light rate comes from a high to uh, an axial or the low refractive index, you find that the refracted uh, ray bends from the normal. And from previous lesson, we know that when you increase the angle of incidence, the refracted ray will bend more and more away from the normal. So when you look at this, okay, when you try to change the angle, uh, you find that the angle of refraction increases as the angle of incidence increases. So you find that the angle of refraction gets very very close to the uh, surface. Okay, so you find that where the angle of incidence gets so large that the angle of refraction in this case would be 90 degrees. Okay, so you find that the angle of refraction will be 90 degrees. Okay, and this is known as the critical angle. The angle of incidence is now known as the critical angle uh, C. Okay, it's so labeled as a small c. So, if you increase the incidence angle slightly more, what will happen is that the refracted ray will have to go back into the medium one. That's the light ray will go towards noisy, and if you push it even more, what will happen is that the angle of incidence, uh, sorry, the refracted ray will actually bounce back, and this happens. So right now the ray is being reflected back, and the ray is no longer reflected out of the medium two. So when reflection happens, uh, the law of reflection describes the ray of behavior, which the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. And so the light ray is right now undergoing what we call as total internal reflection. When your light ray is greater than the critical angle, what will happen is that the uh, angle of reflection will be equal to angle of incidence. So this is the actual picture of a total internal reflection. Notice that uh, what happens is that the light ray actually tries to go out of the water surface, but because the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle, you'll find that the it goes through total internal reflection and angle of reflection is equal to the incident angle. So how do we obtain critical angle? So we can actually use Snell's law. So n2 over n1 equals to sine i over sine r. When i is equal to the critical angle, you find that by definition r will be equal to 90 degrees. Thus, your Snell's law becomes uh, n2 over n1 equals to sine c over sine 90. But we know that sine 90 is actually equals to 1. So you are left with just simplified to sine c. And if you want to find c, you just shift this over across. Okay, and then you have this. Okay, so if you know uh, medium 1 and medium 2 value, you can actually find the critical angle. However, if your medium 2 is actually a vacuum or air, and since we know that vacuum or air has a refractive index of 1, you can further simplify this particle formula into this. So this formula can be used if your medium 2 is actually vacuum or air. So C is in this case is the maximum incident ray angle where light ray will still refract out of the medium where it is equal to 90 degrees. Anything more than that would actually produce total internal reflection. We now demonstrate total internal reflection of laser light in a water jet. A laser is a line such that its light passes through a water tank and into a tube at the bottom of the tank. Powdered coffee cream has been added to the water to make the laser beam more visible. When the stopper is removed, water squirts out of the tank into the container below. The laser beam is reflected internally and follows the water jet into the tank. In this close-up view, we can... Yes, you can notice the light ray or the, in the laser is actually trying to come out of the water, but because the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle, you find that it actually bounces off the water surface and goes back right into water. You can see the internal reflections of the laser beam in the water jet. Okay, so right now uh, it, when I say bounces off, it bounces off 
this water surface okay it tries to go out but again uh, the angle of incidence is actually greater than the critical angle it bounces off and you see it repeats so that's why it actually follows the path of the water instead of just going straight out this is just a picture that how the light ray actually bounces off the uh, plastic or this transparent surface because each of the angle of over here is actually greater than its critical angle the angle reflection it go, is equals to angle incidence and it bounces off okay as well and something uh, seemingly trivial actually leads to an important application which is the uh, optical fiber so you find that light actually can travel around and around a uh, wire instead of just going straight and can be guided and you find that that actually leads to transmission of light in a wire which becomes a high-speed internet that now you enjoy so this is uh, just a picture that how light ray actually can go around a wire so a brief summary refraction actually com is actually going light ray coming from an angle and it passes through di two different mediums and there are two different cases where uh, low to high and it goes from high to low and if it's low to high light ray will bend towards the normal okay from high to low you find that you need to evaluate which situation the angle of incidence is less than critical angle at a critical angle or it's more than the critical angle light ray bends to the normal so you just only need to apply the snell stop for angle of incidence that's less than the critical angle the light ray is actually bending away from the normal and if angle of incidence is equal to critical angle angle of refraction is 90 degrees and if it's more than critical angle total internal refraction occurs this you just use Snell's law as per normal angle of refraction at 90 is also you can use Snell's law cal to calculate but when you encounter total internal refraction you have to remember that it is law of refraction okay angle of incidence equals to angle of refraction okay that's all for now